Hello and welcome back to the Pinkin.com Norwich City podcast, brought to you in association, of course, with Coleman's of Norwich. Now, this is a little bit of a different episode, not just because your usual host, Connor Southwell, is temporarily replaced by me, but also because we brought in a sort of different type of pundit for this one, where it's usually us journalists waffling on. We spoke about some, we spoke to some Norwich fans about how they're feeling going into the last three games of the season, hopefully the last six games of the season, but that's sort of what we discussed. I'm sure we discussed a lot of the topics you guys are already debating amongst yourselves in terms of whether Norwich will get to the playoffs, how they would do if they got there, which teams um, Norwich fans would fancy going into those games, the tactics that they would need to apply, how they'll get on in the next few games, stag do's, player of the season, um, Viking festivals, loads of good different stuff. So hopefully you enjoy this little bit of a change up uh, for this one. Of course, we'll be back after the the Bristol City game for your usual podcast. But as a midweek sort of fan special, hopefully you enjoy this. Thank you um, to to the guys that joined me for this one. They'll get their own introduction as sort of we we progress through the conversations. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. Um, Pinkin dot com, the place to go, of course. And we will see you very soon. Right, well, I said to you uh, off camera, I said that when we were planning this last week, it felt like maybe a, a little bit more of a, a discussion to be had over whether Norwich were going to get into the playoffs and things. I know you were at Preston this weekend. Does it feel like after that win, it, it's, I mean, I don't want to say guaranteed, that feels very, very far, but it feels like Norwich were in a really, really good position, doesn't it? Yeah, and without trying to sort of tempt fate too prematurely, I think, yeah, you'd like to think that win has pretty much sort of got it nailed on. Um, I think, you know, we all went there hoping for sort of a front for energetic, positive performance, obviously off the back of some perceived sort of negative displays away from home and obviously also surrendering that 2-0 lead away at um, Hillsborough Sheffield Wednesday on Tuesday night. And I think, you know, it wasn't, you know, the most fluent, you know, brilliant, brilliant sort of away performance Norwich put in. But I think on the whole, it was a fairly sort of controlled, decent away display, sort of defended doggedly. Um, took that brilliant chance, Gabriel Sauer, obviously a moment of magic at the end to, you know, you, you know, win it, win it in the, what, what was essentially the last minute. Uh, but I think, you know, overall it was it was a pretty decent performance. And I think yeah, you look at the other results and the fact, that, you know, had Preston won that and then they had that game in hand as well, admittedly against Southampton, but still a game in hand. That would have taken it out of Norris City's hands had they won those two. So that essentially sort of knocks them out of the race. And I think you look at the table now, obviously a six-point cushion. I know, again, Hull and Coventry have got a couple of games in hand. I think they've got to play each other. And I think they've both got to play Ipswich. Their, their run-ins are looking quite difficult. You'd like to think one win in the next two home games against, obviously, Bristol City and Swansea, two teams with sort of very little to play for and, you know, two relatively sort of favourable-looking fixtures. We'll get it wrapped up. So uh, I think all of us there at Deep Dare and everybody following back home has, has got to be thinking we're pretty much over the line now. Does it feel like Norwich have almost hit their stride away from home at a, a really good time? I think we've we've spoken more generally about Norwich and how they've found momentum at the right time in the season. I think a lot of that momentum obviously has come from their performances at Carrow Road, but with hopefully a playoff campaign that will obviously be decided away from home, you'd think, in the semi-final. Um, and then obviously if they do get through that, they'll have to go to Wembley. When we talk about building up momentum for different scenarios, does it feel like away from home Norwich have just started performing and just started finding the performances they need away from Carrow Road as they go into hopefully a period where they'll need to be good away from home? Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. I think bar the Leicester game on Easter Monday, where it was, you know, to be honest, yeah, a hugely sort of passive and disappointing display. I think you look at the away games recently, Preston, you know, a fairly solid control performance. Stoke, obviously, you know, quite limited opposition, but went there and, you know, cruised the game, obviously, 3-0. And then even games like, you know, Sheffield Wednesday, I mean, Norris City should have been 4-5-0 up and, you know, home and dry, basically, in that game. And obviously, ended up drawing it. But I think you look at the away performances and, even games like Blackburn, where, you know, taking the lead and QPR, we've taken the lead and, you know, perhaps sat back with that lead and, you know, not seeing the game out like we should have done. I think overall, the away performances have, you know, significantly improved. I mean, looking back to sort of, you know, the dark days before Christmas and autumn, you know, I was there at like your Sunderland's and Watford's and some, you know, Millwall, some really, really sort of disjointed all over the place away performances where a fellow like Norris City could just get nothing on the road. And I know ahead of that Preston game, we were something like 19 in the form table away from home. But, you know, you look at recent performances and you are seeing a bit of an upturn in, in fortunes there and sort of a bit of a positive pattern. So obviously with Sargent back in the team, that's made a massive difference. And obviously Rowe coming on off the bench uh, with about 15 minutes to play at, uh, at deep down at the weekend, sort of, you know, changed the game as well. So I think, you know, the away form is starting to pick up. I think, you know, having those, you know, protagonists and key players back has, has come at the right time. So, you know, with a with probably a massive, semi-final away leg coming against, you know, one of Leeds, Ipswich, uh, Southampton or or Leicester. Who knows who's going to be at the minute? Um, I think, you know, it's, look, it's looking pretty positive. Yeah, I was going to come on to that sort of automatic promotion race and maybe who Norwich will end up facing 
in the playoffs. I know there are a lot of strands to dissect even now with, with three games left of the season for Norwich. But when you look at that sort of picture, I suppose, who would you like to face and who do you feel like Norwich will face? Because, I mean, there's even the variable that Norwich could finish fifth or sixth. So there's so much to discuss. So uh, don't, don't be afraid to miss out a couple of points. But just with where you're at now, looking at sort of the situation unfolding, how do you feel it pans out for Norwich and, and who do you think they've got the best chance against in the playoffs? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the permutation is something that me and probably lots of other Norwich City fans have been thinking about an unnecessary amount recently. I certainly have. Um, you know, it, I mean, the automatic race is just it's bizarre. I mean, it looks like none, none of them really want to go up by the looks of things. Yeah. I mean, obviously, all dropping points of the weekend. I watched that Leicester game at, at home park against Plymouth. And again, they're a bit all over the place. And I'll bar that, you know, win against us on Easter Monday. I mean, their, their form's been woeful recently. So, I think, and uh, yeah, you mentioned we don't even know where Norwich City are going to finish yet. You know, all the talk is <laughs> of sixth, but, you know, West Brom are quite easily catchable as well. So if we win, you know, two or even the last three of all our, all our games. So I don't know. I, part of me would b- back us against Ipswich just because, you know, psychologically, yeah. you know, 15 years famously and obviously beating them at Carrow Road the other week. But then the prospect of finally losing to them on the stage that big is just pro- probably just, you know, too grim to bear. So uh, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, Ipswich, they may well end up going up automatically. And to be honest, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but I'd almost rather that than they came yeah. We just avoided them just to, you know, just keep ourselves to themselves and, you know, say fair play to them, credit where you, Kieran McKenna, but, you know, we're, we're nothing to do with that anymore. So, uh, I'd, who do I want to play? Um, I'd like to think we will actually come fifth. I think, you know, the games on paper look very winnable. I think West Brom are easily catchable, in which case it's possibly looking like Southampton, but then they've got those two games in hand as well. And looking like they might be coming into a form at, you know, a, pr- a pretty good time. I was watching Sky Sports News earlier and they had Adam Armstrong on, who's obviously been banging in the goals. And, you know, that's not an easy game. So who would I want to play? You'd, you'd probably have to say Southampton just because of those, of those four, they have, you know, historically over the last few weeks and months being that fourth place there. I know they went on a brilliant unbeaten run, but, um, I wouldn't really have had to the prospect in an away game at Ellen Road. I uh, just think, you know, it's an incredibly tough place to go, you know, particularly a second leg, you know, with Norwich City maybe clinging on to a, a one-goal lead or whatever, whatever happens at Carrow Road. Uh, I wouldn't really fancy the prospect of Ellen Road. So, or, or going to Portman Road, to be honest, just on, on a stage that big. So, and then Leicester, you know, their form's been, you know, a bit all over the place, but they've still got, you know, quality players, you know, from, from top to bottom. So I'd probably say Southampton, but that's on the assumption that Norwich City come fifth, but then South Africa could still come third as well with those games in hand. So it's pretty much impossible to call. Um, but I'd, I'd probably like to avoid Ipswich and Leeds, I think, just based on the nature of the occasion and, you know, how difficult that would make it for Norris City. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to uh, to ask you about David Wagner. I feel like you've maybe stuck up for him at times this season and it, it might have divided opinion a little bit. But uh, I think the most recent of those times came after Sheffield Wednesday when, to be honest, I, I agreed with you in... I felt it was a little bit harsh the way that people were sort of talking about David Wagner um, after that game. How much credit does he deserve for turning things around? Because yes, you've got your players like like Josh Sargent coming back from injury to impact things. Your, your Gabriel Saras, your Jonathan Rose earlier on in the season. But for the squad that Norwich have, it still feels like an achievement to have them where they are as a head coach. So it does feel like Wagner deserves a bit of credit at least, doesn't it? Yeah, no, definitely, hundred percent. I, I still find it, you know, remarkable that some fans completely refuse to acknowledge or give him any credit whatsoever. I mean, yeah. you know, admittedly, we should have never been in a position as far down the league as we were in the first place. But you know, the way he's turned it around, the way he's conducted himself off the pitch, it's it's, it's, it's remarkable. And I think he deserves a huge amount of credit for that. Um, you know, fair enough. And you know, I, I, I was, everyone was criticising him just before Christmas, and I, I was too. You know, I was kind of you know almost in the sort of Wagner out camp. But you yeah. know, after the year, obviously that form completely completely turned around. But I think you look at what he's done, particularly at Carrow Road. Obviously, eight eight wins on the spin now an unbeaten record pretty much stretching back to around the festive period um it's remarkable and you know admittedly the away performances some of them you know to net you know blackburn maybe your qpr and definitely leicester he could maybe be you know argued to you know step back a little bit and perhaps you know he could have really taken the great game by the scruff of the neck and been a bit more proactive but i think overall um you know he, he does deserve credit and it, it, it does frustrate me a little bit just when you know it's all quite reactionary sometimes you know off the back of you know a brilliant you know run at a win and, and run of games at home you know one result that might not even be sort of the, 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 a catastrophic result at all you know a draw at Sheffield Wednesday people sort of seem to turn at the first possible opportunity and again you know I'm not saying you know Wagner's you know Pep Guardiola or the second coming or in any way sort of, you know what Daniel Farker or Alex Neal or you know Paul Lambert was at Norris City but I think the way he's you know catapulted us from basically just above the relegation zone before the festive period. So, you know, a team that's pretty much nailed on, on, on the playoffs and finding form at the perfect time, he does deserve credit. And again, you know, I appreciate he, he might not be everybody's cup of tea, but 
you know what what he's done and again you know, i've seen a lot of people argue that you know he's it, it, this is in spite of wagner that we've improved rather than because of him in the sense you know i've got quality players like jonathan rowe and josh Sargent coming back i mean i understand that but equally you know any manager is only as good as sort of the ammunition he's given and got on the pitch so i think he does deserve a huge amount of credit and you know for for some of his limitations particularly away from home which i completely acknowledge it, it's just it's a little bit frustrating sometimes when you know even, even if we do end up coming fit fifth or you know and capping a brilliant season by finishing the playoffs it does feel like he's always fighting a losing battle trying to sort of win over the, the majority of Norwich City fans so um again I'm, I'm not saying he's perfect but I think he does deserve a lot of credit for not only what he's done on the pitch but also the way he's conducted himself off it yeah definitely it's the way that, that Norwich have turned things around he his coach and staff do deserve a lot of credit I'm going to round it off as uh, as the thunder comes in Norwich by uh, asking you for some predictions Going into these last few games, obviously it's Bristol City this weekend. So first, I'm going to ask you for a score prediction for that one. Then, whether Norwich make the playoffs, I think I know what you're going to say to that one. And then, how far they get in the playoffs? Okay, that's difficult. I have to threefold. Uh, so first one, Bristol City. I mean, it's, it's it's pretty much impossible to predict anything but a Norwich City in there. Touch wood. Um, you just think, look at the form and you know the nature of the opposition we've got. The fact they're playing for nothing. It's almost a perfect combination, a perfect sort of storm of factors that would make you think that Norwich City should win and hopefully win quite comfortably. So I'd probably say three one at the weekend. Um, I'd, I'd like to think we'll keep a clean sheet, but then equally, you know, you never know with Norwich. But I think you know with with Roy back in the matchday squad and obviously Sargent firing on all cylinders and, and Borges science and obviously Sarah as well. Uh, I'd be surprised if we didn't put, you know, at least two goals past them. So I'll probably say three one for Saturday. Um in terms of what was next for Will Norwich make the playoffs? I, yeah. I think I think I think we will now. And I think, you know, if that result materializes on Saturday, then that will pretty much mathematically guarantee it. So I'd be flabbergasted if like, Norwich didn't make the top six at this point after that, that brilliant result um at Deep Dale on Saturday. And then finally in the playoffs, I mean, yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm always sort of a glass sort of half full, you know, relatively optimistic fan. So I would like to think that David Wagner, obviously a manager with history in the playoffs, you know, having taken Huddersfield up, I think without scoring a goal in all three playoff matches, obviously yeah. winning the penalties against Sheffield Wednesday and then um, in the final against Reading, was it? Um, yeah. I'd like to think, again, for, you know, for some of his limitations away from home and some of the things that, you know, can justifiably be criticised for, I think that he will, he, he, knows, he knows what he's doing at a stage like that. And I would trust him to hopefully get a positive result at Carrow Road first time up, be that against Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich, Southampton, whoever. And then I'd like to think in the away leg, it wouldn't be a case of, you know, preservation, sitting, obviously it entirely depends on the context, but I'd like to think, you know, after, you know, the way we played at Preston on Saturday and, you know, a recent relative upturn in fortunes away from home, um, I'd like to think that he can engineer a victory over two legs against a side who admittedly will be according to the league table you know superior opposition to Norris City but I'd like to think he, he has got a chance of doing that so I don't know if it'd be bold for me to sit here and say you know Norris City are going to win at Wembley you know Wagner's going to be you know the hero we all needed but um I'd, I'd be going to the playoffs confident and we are we are one of the form sides again you look at you know those three or four just think for automatic promotion none of them are in any sort of rich vein of form at all in fact the complete opposite whereas Norris City are on a sort of positive sort of pathway of progression so um I'd be uh, I'd be confident that you know I don't think anybody would anybody would want to play us in the playoffs at all so um Again, difficult to call it, but um, I'd, I'd, I'd be confident that Norris City, I, I wouldn't write us off going all the way and, and doing the business once again. Good man, let's hope so. Fingers crossed. Right, Will, I know you're you're known for coverage of the Norwich youth. Well, Norwich yeah, is, is your name, obviously, coverage of, of young Norwich players and, and the academy as well. But we'll start off with the first team because I know you're a Norwich fan and, and you've got to be pleased with, with how things are going um, in the playoff race or the race for, for the playoffs right now, right? Oh, um, it, mate, it's just been so refreshing. Um, the boys are doing so well and, and the turnaround has, has been amazing. Fair play to David Wagner, all his staff, did an, an absolutely tremendous job. And yeah, it feels like they're doing a bit better than the academy at the minute. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you sort of pinpoint that turnaround? I mean, it feels like to me probably Josh Sargent is the bigger, biggest factor, but there are a lot of things that go into it and, and Wagner and his staff deserve credit. Where do you sort of see in terms of sort of the the percent i'm not going to make you name numbers but in terms of sort of apportioning the uh the credit for it where do you see the factors in that turnaround from how terrible things were sort of before the turn of the year to now since since sort of early 2024 yeah i mean i've kind of got three sectors that i kind of put it down to i think one which you mentioned is josh Sargent. it just connects the whole whole team up so well um i think when we had hawang either it was just a bit too just like disjointed up there and we could really kind of like connect and get some um, chemistry going in the attacking um, areas of the pitch. And yeah, Sardar has been so critical. His goals and that form during March, February is, abs- is absolutely superb. Also, I want to say a big shout out as well to, to, to Nunes as well. I think it's been absolutely amazing. Um, 
I think he came in, I think, like around like the East Anglia Derby period. And I just felt from there, like that game just onwards, he, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, I've never really been a fan of Nunes in like the attacking midfield role, which was kind of like, mm. like, like, like experimented there. Kind of like during the like, like, like November time, I don't really understand the thought process, but he's so much better from deep. And oh my God, like, I think the Watford game was actually a really good example for me because I was watching that game on the Red Bus, I think it was just absolutely just moaning about how like lack of quality we were on the ball in possession at Watford game. But then if you contrast that to now, this is such a stark difference in terms of how we want to play on the ball. So much more progressive, so much more faster as well. So I think Nunes has, has been brilliant. And I think if, 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 if it wasn't for the form of Sarah, McLean, Sargent, I think he'd be up there for play of the season. But yeah, I mean, I've got to admit it. Um, I wasn't one of Dave Angle's biggest fans. I'm probably still not, probably because I'm more on, on, on the youth side of things. But the, the way he's turned it around, like I think I think you get judged on as a manager, how you could turn around the bad times into the good. And wow, he's just a perfect example of how you just turn a season around. And he deserves so much credit and so fair play to him, really. That's kind of like my three factors, if you will. Yeah, I think with Wagner, it's, it comes a lot down to how good you think the squad is as well. Because, I mean, a lot of people I've seen are saying that and I think a lot of this is sort of stereotyping about about Norwich, and obviously Norwich are a team that have who have in in recent years done really really well, whenever they've been in the Championship. But to me, it does feel like the squad isn't quite as good as it has been in in recent years. Where do you sort of stand on that in terms of how much credit goes to David Wagner for working with the players that he's got? Because a lot of people think that. I think from afar, especially, they just glance at Norwich and they think, oh, they've got all these class players. They've won titles recently but do you think Wagner actually when you when you really analyse that squad has done a fairly good job to have them where they are right now? I think he's done an absolutely amazing job to like to, to turn it around um I still think there's some case studies like some games like this season like like Leicester away recently where I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit too skeptical if he's a man to like lead us forward but I think any man that could turn around a team of which we were like like well like I don't know how bad it was in terms of like numbers wise but it was, it, it was awful it was torrid there was no direction so it deserves massive, massive credit for that. But I just generally feel I think the team just got a massive like boost when Sergeant was back fit. And I actually remember as as a fan base, we were saying, I think, when when Sergeant got injured, that like it could be like like really big. And we we're just trying to say, like, as long as, as we can like keep in and around it, obviously yeah. 70 places was a bit too extreme for that. But <laughs> somehow we managed to turn it around with like two points per game and stuff like that. So yeah, I think Sergeant was a big, big boost for the side. I think obviously Ashley Barza said as well that Sergeant is it is a fast player, if you will. Whether I agree with that is another story, but um, yeah, I think I gave, gave the group such a big lift, and I just don't think obviously the way Wagner likes to play, Van Hordel isn't, isn't isn't really is quite a profile of striker. Bars are often on his own is a bit of a bit hit and miss as well. So I think having that key man back, he's so he's so he's so key to this side, and I say it every week. We're, we're so lucky to have him, and the thought of having Rose, Sarah, Sergeant, etc. back is really exciting going into the last stages of the season for me. Yeah, definitely. But you mentioned that. Uh... That Leicester game where I think the tactics, as you said, were, were I think since they've turned it around, that's probably the most critical I've been of the tactics. It felt like Wagner did get it completely wrong. And we know he has this tendency to drop deeper and, and try and absorb pressure a little bit against the better sides. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it works. It worked quite well a couple of times against Ipswich this season and, and maintain that unbeaten East Anglian derby record, of course. But... Do you worry at all that if Norwich do get into the playoffs, which I all think I think we all know there's a very good chance they do, do you worry at all that Wagner will go a bit too extreme on the on the defensive tactics against these better sides and Norwich might be caught out with that? I think I think the tournaments to it really. Like I feel when like we've played like 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 the top teams in really good moments and some and some teams in the top half in really bad moments. I think Leicester were like in like a really bad moment and there's a real chance to really catch them off guard and stamp our authority on yeah. things. Whereas the Ipswich game, it was more kind of they're in really good form, and I think we kind of the ones that kind of like started to like like they're better kind of in form. So it's really hard. Like I do, I do agree where, where like he's coming from, but in terms of like 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 the quality we have, you kind of look at it deep down, and you kind of go, Sarah, Sergeant, Gun. You you sound as if you've got got like a few of the best players in the league here, and it's just, when they start kind of playing so compact and so narrow. One, 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 we don't look half as good, and two, it just recipe for kind of disaster really and uh I've, I've already got a thought of um us going into a one nil home lead going into the away leg away at Ipswich at Hampton and uh worrying how we're going to approach that because it, on, 
to be fair to Wagner, it's not like, like, like the case that like, it hasn't worked. It, it has to some extent, it hasn't to some extent. It's which is a great example. Leicester is a poor example. So it's hard for David Wagner, but I really feel that that Leicester game, we could have really kind of showed some more ideas of, of how to be like better in possession. But unfortunately, we just came up short and we were just too me- like, like messy in possession, really. And that is when I think confidence can then decline. But fair play to him. He's picked up again. He stopped the halt. So fair play to him there. But um, yeah, it does worry me immensely. But I'm just hoping. I feel like if we are to kind of progress in his playoff legs, I think we need more of like a two goal advantage going into it because I'm fearful going into one nil lead that um, we could get picked quite easily. Yeah, definitely. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, and uh, I don't think people will be surprised to see me asking you about this. You're probably the best person to speak about it really but there is this sort of strange negative thread as part of this run towards what seems like the playoffs that I think is is I mean it is standalone in terms of the the way that the club is otherwise because everyone is in this positive mood but then there's just this niggling problem that appears to be continuing with Wagner's reluctance to, to sort of use certain players and he keeps talking about a small squad but he obviously has those young players available to him that keep making the match day squads aren't really getting any minutes at all. As somebody who's an advocate for the youth and, and watches these players and knows how good they are, how frustrating has it been for you, this whole thread of, of Wagner taking all of these young players and not using them in games? Mate, it's been so frustrating. But I want to cast my back to the FA Cup game as well against Bristol Rovers, where mm. I thought that was a real, real talking point. I think on a bench that they were was Bleheta and maybe someone else. And the fact that, like, at the time, Ken Aboa, Finley Welsh weren't, weren't on that bench in that period or even given a chance, I thought was absolute tragedy, really, because um, they were playing so well at a really good level, at Kelly level at PL2 as well. But, but the annoying thing is now you've got to think about it, I think, as Connor said quite a lot of times as well, is that these players haven't played for the under-21s now since, since yeah. March, mid April. Yeah, yeah, mid, mid-March against Reading, I think it was. And it's just so frustrating, honestly. Like, I think... It's just when I just look at that situation in the FA Cup game, you, you I think we got rid of Blahetta five days later after that. And I was just like, look, I think seeing that seeing that case on you right there, it's just made me think that like Van integrating these players onto the bench, it, it's just like a box tick for him, really. I think it's just a box tick for him to be here next season or want to be here next season. I don't really think he kind of cares too much about the, like their, their development as much. Look, I know it's quite a strong opinion, but I just I haven't got evidence to kind of suggest otherwise, really. Look, um, the one time they did come on, I think um, Finley Welsh came when he gets Middlesbrough away. I think yeah. there might have been a quote after that, like, obviously, Van just wanted to kind of keep his players protected for the next game. And it, I just kind of feel like that those individuals, they're such great players and such good, good assets for Academy. And the fact that we can lose Kenneth Burr again after Alex Matos last summer, it just shows that, that the Academy is in quite a weak place at the minute. And, and you've got a manager who doesn't want to give them opportunities. So, look, I'm really annoyed about that. Me coming on here and I'm running about it isn't going to change it. Um, the club seems to have a good a policy on what they want to do, but yeah, on it, mate. I'm so frustrated. That 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 Bristol Rovers game was a huge opportunity, and the fact that they opted to go for Balhetra on the bench against like to instead of wanting to kind of give your 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 players a chance, I thought that spoke spoke volumes really, and I just can't get get out of my head that like I feel like Welsh Burr being on the bench is just a, it's just a, I don't know, a box ticket exercise for them really. So yeah, I'm a bit annoyed about that. I can't lie to you. Yeah, I think Wagner's, uh, well, I mean, I suppose I'm speaking for him a little bit here, but Wagner, Wagner's argument and any manager's argument in that situation could be that the young players just aren't good enough. Um, obviously, you've seen probably more of them than anybody else. Has. You've seen a lot of them yeah. um, this season. In terms of those players who have been in and around it, the names that people will be familiar with, Abo, Welsh, Montoya, Pedro Lima, um, Reneke's been in and around it as well, hasn't he? Out of those players, um, I suppose it's unrealistic to expect that they all could be starting championship games. But which of those do you feel are good enough? And in terms of the levels that they're providing, do you think there are some of them that are warranting maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes off the bench in, in championship games? Yeah, I think I think a good case to add to this is Cindy Van Hordonk as well, because I watched Kenneth Burr play and, I watched, and I've and i seen a bit of Van, Van, Van Hordonk play for the game play for the, the under-21s. And Van, Van Hordonk looks look, look, look like a striker. He just wants to operate in the box, if you will. And I think Kenneth Bell actually offers you more than that. He he can offer you that more like an effective profile coming from deep then like on the half turn operating like that. So I, I kind of would, would like have an argument that, that Bow is actually more of a stylistic fit compared to Van Hoyden. But I feel like obviously there's probably like more politics like 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 behind that really. And yeah, look, um in terms of like 
our best player kind of going forwards. Look, I know obviously Montoya, obviously um, in, le- in, in, a, in a situation in the summer in January, I think it was he actually had a good chance of kind of being like in, in around the first team as a back, backup left back, but unfortunately that. But it proceed. I know Gorhame has had quite a few injuries this season, but um, I think although he, he's been injured for, for large portions of the campaign, like three times, he has actually got the second most assists in in under twenty league as well. Actually, um, yeah. for Norwich that is so with six. Obviously, gave the side that got seven as well, so just one higher. But yeah, look, um, I think Finley Welsh is an absolutely amazing talent. Um, I kind of liken him to Addis Metti at Bristol City in, in terms of like how like his unique profile of play. He's so good at, at like exploiting gaps of, of gaps of gaps of spaces of his skill and his pace. So, um, look, the, the worry I have with Finley Welsh and um, especially is um, I think he could definitely make it here and be a success here. It's just he's such a unique player, and I don't want Wagner or like the coaches that like come after him to kind of like take away his strengths and like mold him into player he's not because he's such like a really good unique player. Um, honest, like. So that's why I'm a, I'm a bit fearful of, of of like what's going to happen to Finley because he's such a really good player to watch. Um, obviously, he, he, he could also go out on loan as well ne- next summer as well. And I kind of worry what kind of manager is going to kind of like play or like who's going to have him next season. So look, I think the, the, the loans people are going to have to be very smart and and astute of, of, of like where to put him next. But yeah, I think Kenabawa, I just. I just don't think he's going to get more opportunities this season, unfortunately. Um, the, the manager's made himself clear and I obviously don't think he's going to be signing on for the next season. Obviously, he's out of contract. So that's a really um, worrying situation, really. Look, I do think Ken Burke could probably add more than than Van, 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 Van Hooydunk as a backup striker because he is more of like Bagger's kind of profile of striker. He's, he's quick and he can offer more in a build-up play compared to Van Hooydunk, who's more of like a striker poacher kind of player. So I feel like Aboa could kind of add more in that regard as well. Um, Pedro Lima as well, um, although he, he hasn't been overly great in recent weeks, I, I think it's fair to say he was really good in like 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 the winter months, like January especially, uh, playing in like the um, attacking midfield role as well, and he was very good at show, showing his quality there, and 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 when the ball high up at the pitch as well. So the, but they've all shown reasons of of like how they could be in the first team for sure. But I just I'm really worried that. Um, because of their lack of minutes um, recently, um, how they're going to kind of like show showcase themselves, and obviously, it's so hard for them because they they played about once or twice like since like February really, yeah. and then and then all of a sudden they've got to go and like showcase and and, and put themselves at, at first team level. I just think it's so harsh on them or their situation really. So look, I always said across the season, Finley Welsh, like his last two years have been absolutely phenomenal. I don't see Ken us like staying on, so I don't know like how, how the situation is going to evolve. So I think Finley Welsh or, or, or Montoya could be op- op- options for next season, but it just depends really on um, how they kind of are, are viewed on the app on the inside, really. I guess, but yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot to unfold unfold in that sort of uh, that academy picture with David Wagner, probably a, a very key part of that. But to take it from the bigger picture and maybe the long term to the short term, uh, quite quickly, I'm going to ask you for three predictions. Firstly, Bristol Dakota, City right. this weekend and the score for that one. Then if Norwich will get into the playoffs and if you say no, I'll be absolutely shocked. And uh, thirdly, how far Norwich will get in the playoffs. I know I've sort of sprung three quite big and quite decisive questions on you there. <laughs> no, so fine, I, I can only apologise, but uh, <laughs> yeah, if you can give me three of those, that'd be fantastic. So Bristol City scored the weekend, Jet, or at... Uh... I think Bristol City are a team which are very inconsistent. Like you can see them get a get an, a win against Southampton away, for example, but then like they can step up to QPR at home, so I don't know what yeah. to expect really. Um but I think I will go for the boys to win that, maybe two one. Um and then the next one is it playoffs or Yeah, are they getting into the playoffs? Absolutely, we're gonna get in the playoffs. Um I think we've just got too much quality for for commentary in a hole, and I'd be very surprised if we do. And uh next question, right. Okay, I'm gonna break this down. I think we can get to Wembley if we play Ipswich in two legs. And because, right, they've got so much quality. I respect them for, for what they've done. But I think historically, I think we just got the edge over them at the minute. Yeah. And I think for me also, quality is the biggest winner as well. So obviously, I think Southampton Leicester have got Premier League budget. So if you if it's those two in the semi-finals, I'm worried for sure. But if you get Ipswich, yeah. it's a final at Wembley. But I'm on the outskirts. So let's say overall we've got... There's probably a great chance that we could play Southampton or Leicester at the minute. So I'll go. I'll go for a, a semi-final defeat. Sorry. That's all right. I think if uh, if you had offered 
other than any Norwich fan playoffs at this point in well, Definitely. if you asked them in, in November and said, Well, they might lose in the semi final, I think any Norwich fan would have would have snapped your hand off. So let's let's hope they can surprise us and they can both well, I mean we will be surprised <laughs> to get into the playoffs, but we'd be we'd be very surprised, or I think a few people would be very surprised if they managed to navigate some some difficult fixtures and get up to the Premier League. But we'd all love to see it. Thank you very much for joining me, Will. No worries, mate. Thank you. Right, Callum, we'll start with uh, last weekend's events and how they unfolded. Um, you were at a, a Viking festival uh, in Sheringham, I believe, um, for when we spoke on the day. Obviously, you would have had, had things that you were doing and enjoying, but I'm sure it was a, a pretty big moment when, when you all found out that Gabriel Sara had scored that winner, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um it was a good day really. It was um it's kind of a grand national kind of accumulator kind of day that um, yeah. Jack wanted to do in his hometown and yeah, there, there was a lot going on with the Viking festival, so a lot of people about. But yeah, um on final score when Gabby had saved us, that that definitely felt good and it was good that we got the um win. Yeah, I was saying to you um before we came on that when I was sort of planning this, it felt like maybe there was a bit more jeopardy in Norwich mm. City's playoff push, but now it feels like they're in a really, really good position after that win, doesn't it? Yeah, just um, and looking at the run in, you'd think it's all doable. I know that um, recently, I think Bristol City have still got, they had a high scoring game recently, didn't they? And I think Birmingham also did pretty well, didn't they? So there's, um, you look at the run in, it's not, it's never always that simple in the championship, but you'd like to think, you know, that we can get it, get the job done. Does it give you extra confidence that they've now got those two home games against? I mean, uh, as you said, Bristol City are no, you know, they're not going to roll over at Carrow Road and Swansea have done a little bit better since they got the new manager in there. But it feels like with Norwich's home record, part of the confidence in the Norwich fan base that they'll get into the playoffs is because they've got now two games at home, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And hopefully, you know, Chetter can drop a stinker and you know, <laughs> Bristol City can... Um, to be kind and then we yeah they're, they're high they're high scoring recently we'd like to say as you said that home form has been pretty good i don't think there's i think it will be pretty not do you want to say easy getting to sixth for, or even fifth who knows is yeah. is maybe part of it it's, it's the playoff bit that you know that's the worry that's the gamble and whether we've got the squad for that um i don't know to actually win it but i think getting there that should be that should be all right yeah you mentioned there that norwich can still probably aim for fifth they're a point off West Brom now and they've yeah. closed that gap with West Brom I think having some some fairly difficult fixtures between now and the end of the season for you I mean obviously on paper it's better and I'm sure Norwich will want to finish as high as possible but with the way that that sort of automatic promotion race is unfolding and the different teams that Norwich could face and all the permutations does it feel like it will actually be any easier in the semi-final for Norwich if they finish fifth or is it all just sort of a bit of a, a guessing game and it'll be tough whoever yeah. it is? I mean, yeah, as you said, they'll want to be finishing fifth because of the team that finishes third. Uh, they're, they're the team that's got closest to going up automatically. So uh, with, with how that works, you know, they're the, they're the team that will be best in the playoffs. But you do, it doesn't always work like that. Right. I'd like to finish as high as possible. But you never know. You never know. We've just got to get the job done and do a cliche of, I guess, taking it game by game. Yeah, I think last time we were in the play Norwich were in the playoffs. They, I suppose, we're in that position that that we're yeah. talking about in terms of dropping out of the automatic race. They were disappointed yeah. not to have done that. Now they're in a sort of more of an underdog position where mm -hmm. they'll be trying to upset the odds. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a good position to come from? Do you think it takes the pressure off a little bit, especially given they might be against opposition that that will be. They might be completely deflated after missing out on automatic promotion on the final day. So, do you think that puts Norwich in a sort of a position of strength in a way? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it has happened before, hasn't it, where sixth place has gone up and it's, it is a complete gamble. Um, yeah, and people might not be expecting anything from us in that because, you know, you've got teams like Southampton and, you never know, if it's someone like, I don't know, Leeds, Leicester, whichever one doesn't get there, you know, you've got some very good squads there I think we've got some very good players for this league but I, I wouldn't say we've got a, a convincingly good automatic promotion squad not quite so yeah. I think you know playoffs would be about right for us I mean it was disappointing at the beginning of the season when we weren't it didn't look like we were maybe going to get there you know with some of that turgid football that was happening at Carrow Road yeah. but you know we're now going to get there by the looks of by, by the looks of things fingers crossed it might not happen but like, I think I think there's a good chance yeah, you've you've talked about sort of the fact there that playoffs have been the goal and where mm. I think last season yeah. there was more talk of automatics and 
top mm. two, but this season, pretty much since that poor run started around sort of mm. September, October, it's been aiming for the playoffs. Do you think there's any any worry at all that it, it gets to the end of the season and Norwich almost feel like the job's done and they feel like they've reached their target when actually finishing sixth or, or fifth doesn't mean anything if you don't get promoted? Yeah. I, no, I completely get what you mean. I think it's just stability that we want, really, isn't it? And um, mm. even if we, you know get to the playoffs, but then lose and crash out. We've then got the summer, haven't we, where, you know, a lot of players could be sold or a lot of out-of-contract players as well. So there's in that worry and unknown. So financially getting up would be good. It, it's a difficult one to say, really, because, you know, the top six is good. The fact that I, I am happy that recently as well at Carrow, especially in the Ipswich game, it has felt, it's felt more, it has felt more positive recently. And if we can... If the worst came to the worst and did happen, and it would be disappointing, obviously not to go up. I really, you've got to strive for the best. You've got to want to go up. If we if we don't go up, at least you you just got to hope that it's more like that stability's there, and maybe hope we can you know keep some of those players and you know offer some new contracts and stability can continue. Yeah, this is a sort of fan special, so it's a good thing you you mentioned the fans. I feel like. Mm. That's been a thread that's almost gone under the radar in in the story of Norwich, mm. hopefully reaching the playoffs. But it's remarkable, really, the turnaround from where things were. I suppose mm. pre Watford, really, and and since then, that feels like a a, a major moment. But as yeah. somebody who's you know at Carrow Road regularly and goes to mm. away games and is in that atmosphere, how much have you felt it changing from that yeah. miserable point sort of last year and at the start of the season oh, to yeah. to where it's it is cool. now? Yeah, it's definitely changed. It's picking up and, you know, just some of the little things even of when, you know, we haven't had the best first half even and, you know, yeah. there, there are boos because there was, I think that it got to that point earlier in the season where, you know, there was clear, understandably so, a lot of fan unrest and, you know, you could tell yeah. them it's, it's not always nice because you, you wonder every every fortnight you're coming here and I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> you wonder yeah. it's negative. It can't be that good for like mental health and everything. But, you know. Yeah. It's good that, you know, we've all stuck together. And I think Wagner, you know, including myself, proved me wrong. I, I do sometimes still have question marks over over the play sometimes. It's not, I do sometimes wonder what the style is, but, you know, he's there to get the job done. And at the moment, at home especially, the job's getting done. We're, as you say earlier, looking like we're going to finish in the top six. So it is good to see that that atmosphere is, that there has been that improvement and hopefully that can, can continue. I think one of the things you, you see first if you if you log on to sort of Norwich Twitter uh, in the last few days is a debate over sort of player of the season uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. obviously that's you, that's available to, to submit now I don't know mm -hmm. if you've, you've voted yet but if, whether you haven't who who are you sort of leaning towards at this stage I'm torn between three players really um one of them's Kenny McLean I thought he's yeah. had a really good season and I think you know that leadership that he offers is it's so clear he offers a lot in that team um, and he, a lot of, he hasn't won it ever before. So yeah. for one of the experiences, a lot of the pe people we think in, you know, he deserves it. And I, yeah. I've been impressed with him this season. Sometimes he's someone I've had question marks over, but he really has stepped up a lot. There's been some very good passing, looked like a very, you know, that left foot. So it's a one sometimes in some games, yeah. but other times maybe it's not. But like, I do really appreciate him. I think he's a really good player and a massive part. And then there's Rowe as well. I think he's done, he was so good. I mean, it's that part injured where a lot of people may be thinking yeah. you haven't got it but I do think you know for that first half of the season it was he was cut and dry it, it was it was almost secure I think him for that yeah, yeah for that's me, true. anyway and then also you've got Sarah I think ability wise he's he's very clear he's I mean in the team of the season for the EFL for a reason a very good player and I voted for Sarah last year and he but um, truthfully last season I was struggling to pick someone <laughs> yeah. so that's why whereas this year there's a bit more choice so I'm I'd have to think, but yeah, between McLean, Rowe and um, Sarah. That's one. At least you got your top three sorted. Um, <laughs> right, so to finish with, I'm going to put you on the spot, I'm afraid. I've been asking everyone for three predictions. First of all, uh, Bristol City this weekend, where you feel Norwich could make another huge step towards playoff qualification with a win. Then if Norwich will get in the playoffs, which I feel every time I ask it is more anticlimactic because I think we yeah. all know what Norwich fans will be predicting at this stage. And then once they're in the playoffs, and this is probably the most difficult one, yeah. what's going to happen once they're in the playoffs? But let's start off with the, the probably the easiest in, in Bristol City. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go for a 3-1. 
Why not? Nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you have, to, you have to back Norwich really at yeah. home, don't you? Especially yeah. Yeah. against a team that isn't sort of in that top six race. Right then, do you think they'll get in the playoffs? Yeah. 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 And uh, once they're in there, <laughs> what's going to happen? Um... I, I'll say yes to kind of back them. If, if you can tell by the tone, um, <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm saying yes because I don't want to sound negative, but I think they're a, on paper, there are better teams there. I think, remember back when we when we won it last time, we were, I think we were one of the favourites for a reason. We had a very good squad um, in that 14, 15 season. I, I think this time it would be more impressive. I'll say yes, just because I want it, but whether I actually think that, I don't know. So maybe not such a good prediction on that one. <laughs> right, Jack, I think everyone else I've I've spoken to so far on here has said that the playoffs are going to be reached by Norwich City. But how do you feel about it? Are you a, a fan that sort of needs that assurance and needs to mathematically get it over the line before you can enjoy it? Or are you already starting to look ahead to, to maybe after the end of the season? Yeah, um, I suppose trying to get too carried away until we, we actually get it. Uh, we've got a good chance, obviously, you know, two home games coming up. Uh, confidence is running high, as you expect. Uh, but yeah, once it's mathematically confirmed, then, yeah, I'll start getting excited for playoffs. But, of course, it's you can't help but get carried away with the, the whole prospect of possibly playing at Wembley. And, you know, but, yeah, it's obviously you've got to take it game by game. Yeah, you mentioned the fact that Norwich have a couple of home games coming up. Is part of the confidence for you the fact that they feel like winnable games? I mean, I know Birmingham especially will or potentially could be fighting for their lives on the final mm. day, but it feels like when you compare Norwich's fixture list to some of the teams around them, that they've actually got a fairly favourable last three games, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, um, obviously, no disrespect to Swansea and but Bristol City, obviously, who are playing, you know, we, we should be beating teams like them, obviously, you know, could be famous last words as usual for Norwich, you know, all that, but. Uh, no, especially with our home form for this the new since the new year, it's been um you know it's we've we've gone to every home game you know looking to win and obviously aside from obviously Southampton and the New Year's Day, we've I'm certain we've won every game, league game. Um, yeah. yeah, I think um it's it's looking good and confident that we're going to get two wins and that should by then that should be the playoffs wrapped up. Obviously, you could always have you know go down to the last day, but I think even if that's the case, I feel we should be fine going into it yeah I know I'm talking a lot in in hypotheticals here but mm. I think a lot of the conversation is maybe going into that last day how you would address it if you were David Wagner and Norwich had qualified for the playoffs going into that Birmingham game what would you you do with the team would you be tempted to rest certain players or would you want to keep their match fitness up or I mean I suppose there's the element that Norwich could still be pushing for fifth by then right yeah, exactly. Obviously, we we won't know until basically obviously after full time of the Birmingham game who we're going to play. And uh, I feel like it makes sense, obviously, to rest players. But at the same time, you want to carry on the momentum if we're as we're on a good run of form and you know go into every game looking to win. And uh, you, you never know, obviously. I mean, you know, who knows what the factor might do? Depends, obviously, if we have already got the playoffs wrapped or we're still fighting for it. But uh, I feel like it's always best to you know play your strongest team. Yeah, and with Norwich in the, the strong position that they're in, I know a lot of fans are already looking at who they maybe will face at different stages of the playoffs. Mm. It feels like there are almost too many permutations to try and work out who it mm. might be. But if you could yeah. choose now out of those teams, I mean, it looks likely to be one of <coughs> Leicester, Leeds, Southampton, um, Ipswich. That feels mm. like the most likely for, for it to be one from. Um, yeah. If you could pick one of those, who do you want in the semi final? Oh god, it's tough. Um, I think the the one that you want to avoid is Leeds for definite because I yeah, feel like definitely. out of the four uh, uh, that we've played, I feel like Leeds are the strongest team out of them. Obviously, no disrespect to the other three teams, but um, I think mean, obviously you know, as, despite beating and drawing against Ipswich over the season, it you know it'd be nice to do get one over again. But I don't think the nerves can take it as well <laughs> many others. Um, if I have to sort of go for what I'd I'd rather face have Hampton, I guess. Maybe Leicester, where obviously they've been run form, but um obviously we did lose them Easter Monday. But yeah. I suppose form goes out the window in, in the playoffs. So, you know, on 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 our good day we can be anyone for certain. But I think I'd have to pick Southampton in the semis. 
Yeah, he said form goes out the window. I think David Wagner said uh, a couple of weeks ago that in the playoffs, it's a, a 25% chance for everyone. Mm. Do you sort of subscribe to that thought or do you think Norwich still go into it as quite significant underdogs? Uh, if they do qualify, of course, I have to caveat everything with, with ifs at the moment. Yeah, it does feel in a way from how we were back at the end of, end of last year, um, we would feel a bit underdogs, especially we'll see the, the, the top four, how well they've been doing this season, albeit they're sort of, you can sort of sense the, the, the nerves are getting to them and they're not picking up easy wins. A bit like obviously the last two game weeks by that. But I, yeah, I, think, I suppose, you know, whoever's in the playoffs, everyone's got equal chance of, you know, promotion, you know. So, yeah, I do agree with the 25%. Um, and obviously, you know, all it comes down to is um, who performs on the day. Yeah, I suppose the fact of going in Norwich's favourite in that is the fact that they've got David Wagner, who's he's won the playoffs before, and mm -hmm. I think we'd all agree he's done a fantastic job <clears> in the last <throat> few months. Mm. Where do you sort of stand on him in in the bigger picture and in the long term? Have you sort of come round on him? I, I mean, I suppose nobody could really criticise the job he's done mm -hmm. recently, but looking into the long term, where do you sort of see David Wagner, and and how do you see things unfolding with him? Uh, who knows? I'm not sure. Obviously. Anything could happen in the summer, and obviously, um, you know, you only have to go back to obviously November last year. Then yeah. everyone, most fans were obviously certain that he was going to lose his job, and obviously, he has it. And credit to him, and obviously, the backroom staff they've you know, everyone's played their part, and we've got ourselves in a good position now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, I wouldn't be against you know keeping him obviously i'm not going to say we should get rid of him obviously because it'd be a bit harsh of obviously the, the good work that everyone's done with getting back into a good position but yeah it's, it's tough to tell really but i guess we'll have to see come end of the season where we are you know yeah and you've obviously been a, a norwich fan for a good while now and you've been in and around that crowd mm. for i mean a few promotions really i remember your your yeah. videos especially in the 2018-19 season they yeah. were actually a, a, a great <laughs> theme of my fun yeah. um, supporting Norwich at the time in terms of the mood and where it is and how it feels does it feel given the recent run of form similar at all to to when Norwich have been pushing for promotion previously or does it still feel not quite at that level given the fact that they are only competing for the playoffs rather than automatics uh, it does feel a little bit different obviously because you know Every, every promotion we've had, we've obviously, you know, well, the last two we've won the title. And even with um, when we won the playoffs under Axe Neil, we were yeah. uh, we were still pushing for automatic promotion and we were, we just missed out on it. And it, it sort of feels a bit different now. Obviously, we're, we're, you know, it's fifth or sixth and or bust if you, you know, if you feel yeah. all that way. But uh, obviously, you know, it's always good to, you know, sort of, you know, have a good, you know, idea of, you know, how we're going to get around there and, you know, Give you know, give everything a positive vibe, and you know you've always got to aim for the best you can. And obviously, fifth and sixth is, and obviously after then it's a uh, you know promotion to the Premier League, and you never know. Come at May. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you um, about the sort of player of the season debate that I think has mm -hmm. started to uh, started to unfold quite significantly across sort of social media, and I know everyone yeah. can can vote now. I'm interested to know if you if you have voted who you voted for, and if not, who yeah. you're planning to. Uh, well, I think the um, the voting ended yesterday. I think oh, dear, um, oh, my bad. Monday, obviously. Yeah. Um, I did get my vote, and it, it it's tough. Obviously, I think the um, for me personally, it's definitely between Kane McLean and Gabriel Sara. I feel like obviously Johnny Rowe and Josh Sargent, they they definitely would be up there. But it's just unfortunate the injuries of um, you know, the long term injuries, if you could say, has sort of you yeah. know ruined their. Well, I wouldn't say ruined their chances, but it's obviously compared to Kenny and uh, Sara, they've um. They've been around longer um, throughout the whole season, but I did vote for um, Kenny McLean. Um, obviously, can't go wrong with how well he's been this season. Obviously, the fact that you know how versatile he is, he's done a good job in defence as well as holding midfield. And obviously, you can't credit obviously um, Gabriel Sara. Obviously, you know defensively and attackingly, he's been brilliant. It's very tough. I'll be happy with either one of the two uh, winning, but my vote was for McLean. Nice one. Well, we'll finish with uh, three different predictions that I've been asking everyone to give. The first one is for this weekend against Bristol City and what you think the score is going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Then whether Norwich will get into the playoffs, which I feel mm -hmm. at this stage is, is probably the easiest of the three. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, and I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but, mm -hmm. but how far Norwich will get in the playoffs and how they'll do in those. But if we start with Bristol City. Yeah, uh, 
obviously Bristol City. Uh, uh, I'm going to go for a three-one win. I'm going to say. I feel I feeling three confident. people out of four have said three-one now. So oh, okay. that's definitely oh, a popular yeah. scoreline. Yeah, it's not often I go. For, I always go for like a two-nil, two-one, but I'm feeling three-one. I think you know we're scoring a lot at home, so I, I feel why not. Obviously, you know, it'd be nice to keep a clean sheet, but you know, you never know these days. Yeah, and in terms of whether Norwich will get into the top six, yeah, I feel I feel like um, the chances are very looking good at the minute. It's obviously it's in our hands now, and uh, yeah, I feel like we should we we will get it. We're fifth or sixth. I I'm gonna go for sixth. I'll say, but you know, there you go. Yeah, and when they get there, I mean, <laughs> tell us the answer we're all hoping for. Are they gonna Are they gonna get into the Premier League? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ho- yeah, I'm hoping. That. You've got, you've got, you got to uh, keep it positive about it. But yeah, um, you know, when we get there, then you, yeah, I'll be confident. Let's hope so. <laughs> right, Peaky. If we start with uh, last weekend, and uh, I'm sure one that was very entertaining for you, very, very interesting for you. Um, I hope you don't mind telling the story. I've sort of put you on on the spot a little bit, but uh, although it was a huge win for Norwich, it wasn't just a, a run of the mill huge win for you, was it? No, it's my stag do. So obviously there with a few friends, obviously not all all of them being Norwich fans, but we all come together to uh, to see obviously the mighty Nodge. Uh, fantastic in terms for it. it. It was a little bit of a low quality game that one moment of quality wins it. But yeah, it'll, it'll live long for a long, long time with me and, and, and go on forever with with those sort of things with that one, one special moment. So we can thank Gabby for that one. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're someone that I see sort of all over the country. Really, you uh, you go almost every away game. I think. I think last season, unfortunately, you made the decision to to go to every every away game I, last I, season. But uh, yeah. I did. Uh, unfortunately, in terms of uh, of dealing with HQ uh, and in terms of uh, with a wedding coming up, I've had to turn around and be a little bit more selective. But I still think I, I think it's going to work out about twenty games in terms of away from home. Yeah. So it's not too bad in terms on that one. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, I can give myself a little tap on the back. Yeah, there definitely aren't aren't many you missed. So you're probably in a good position to tell us a bit about sort of the the fan mood. I'm sure everyone knows it's positive, but as somebody who's seen Norwich win the championship before, seen probably a few promotions now, as I think we all have anyone connected to, to Norwich City. Where does the mood at the moment compare to you for you to to those sorts of previous years? Is it is it up there or does it feel a little bit less because there's still obviously the enormous hurdle of, of the playoffs hopefully to come? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely a positive one. It's been obviously a very, very odd season in terms that I Obviously, we've we've gone from looking a man that was completely and utterly beaten to turning it into a fabulous run and and doing absolutely, you know, I'll say, incredible things. Because to come back from that sort of that sort of run and and turn us into, you know, uh, you know, a a, a in form, uh, sorry, a, a entering the playoffs potentially in form. It, it, it gives us the best possible chance if we are looking, you know, to turn around and go in and compete. The, really, that that excitement's there. You've turned around. We've we've had quite a good record against teams, especially at home, uh, who will be also be in that playoff run. And I mean, if you if you look at it, that Leicester, okay, we played Leicester when we played them at home. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best uh, the best game, unfortunately for us. Obviously, just after losing Sargent, Leeds, obviously collapse in terms of that. Ipswich, I mean, they fully uh, fully switched on performance, absolutely fantastic in terms of it. Yeah, all right, probably got a little bit lucky in in terms of that you know they probably weren't on their day as well, but I think probably you have to look at tactically. We turned around and uh, and did the job in terms of that one, and then Southampton, okay. That's probably the main worry. Looking in terms of that, those playoffs, um, in terms of that, okay, we you know we struck a result, but can we turn round and and turn that into a win? Um, West Brom, that's what we did. Um, so, like I say, you know, it's it's for the teams that are in there at the moment. They are teams that Norwich could do a job against. It's probably the away game that they've probably got to go into it with a healthy bit. But from a from a from a fan point of view, absolutely we you know it looks it looks really positive at least. 
Yeah, definitely. One of the things you mentioned there was the fact that Norwich will hopefully be going into the playoffs as an informed team. And I think if you look at any of the tables since sort of the start of this year, it has Norwich almost in, in the automatic places and in that sort of form. Going into these last few games, I suppose there, there could be a, a lot of discussion about game management and the way that Wagner uses his players. It does feel like maybe Norwich only need three or four points to qualify for that top six. But do you feel that it's it's actually really important to still get some very consistently good results in these last three games if Norwich are to go into the playoffs and, and have a good chance of having that confidence and momentum? Momentum, exactly the word that I was going to go with. Momentum is everything in terms of when you go into the playoffs. When you look at the season that Fulham um, came on that absolutely huge charge and then beat uh, Villa, I think it was, in the playoff final, those are the those sort of moments that you really, really do need and essentially can play a little bit of a game, um, essentially uh, m- uh, mentally more so than anything else. The, the, the big one, I think, in terms of whoever finishes third, well, to be fair, in terms of actually look, including Southampton, if Southampton can, can win their game, and I know it's against Leicester, but yeah. in terms of they can win that game in hand and go level, two teams are going to miss out by by a hair's breath and essentially how's their how's that mentality going to be i mean leicester themselves like other than against us can't buy it can't buy a win um in terms for it but like you've got that obviously i know everyone else is is sort of stumbling in terms of of what's going on with it but the two teams that are going to miss out from what looked a three horse race that is now again back in as a four a four horse race potentially that could definitely see those teams in fifth and sixth being um, actually a a little bit more confident rather than the usual in terms that we've seen whoever's typically finished third or anything like that for the last few years uh, going on. So yeah, the Norwich need to keep it, but what they also need to make sure is that they don't pick up any unnecessary or I suppose silly injuries or suspensions. Is there any one of those four teams it feels likely Norwich would face in the playoffs that, that you would prefer to face? It feels like prefer. a lot of the people I've spoken to are saying Southampton. The, I, I wouldn't want to play Southampton at no. the moment in terms of it. Like they, uh, the, I, I feel that if you look at our results against them, you take that second game of the season where everything was a little bit of yeah. chaos that was going on at Southampton. Yeah, all right, we're 4-3 up with seconds to go and, and they get the penalty and they score it. Yes, we turn around and um, I've played them at home. Is Wagner likely to concede that much possession again? I, I'm not entirely convinced that I'd want to play them in terms for it. Leicester is probably the team that you'd actually want to probably come up against um, in terms of when you look at, so apologies, wind just blown a door. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in terms of, um, I like say, what's gone on for, uh, for them, I think to blow a 17-point lead and end up in the playoffs, as much as they've got an absolute class squad, it could be the, essentially that that one part of it. Um I don't think I'd want the narrative of either Ipswich or, or Farker versus Norwich. Um, I don't think yeah. I'd want that. Yeah, is that mainly down to nerves or do you think that would actually have an no, impact? Uh, nerves on Ipswich, no thanks. Um, yeah. Essentially, the narrative just purely and simply around around Fark, it could just be something that could end up building them up or, or anything else. But who really knows? <laughs> yeah, no, I suppose a lot of it comes down to tactics and the way that Norwich apply themselves you sort of hinted at it a little bit earlier but do you feel that Wagner will have to maybe come out of his shell a little bit compared to what he has done against a lot of the better teams in this league I think Leicester was was really the prime example a few weeks ago when they seemed to be on the ropes sort of form wise Norwich went there and, and tried to sit in do you think it's important that at least for that home leg Norwich actually go for it and try and impose themselves in an offensive sense when you look at our away form, you'd have to sit there and say we'd probably have to go in, not comfortable, but we'd have to go in with with some form of lead to be able to protect. Um, I think, to be honest, when you've watched when you've watched us in terms of anything away or at home, probably one of the most complete and I don't know maybe he maybe it was a lesson that he learned from the letter from the Leicester game itself but when we played Ipswich maintaining that uh, I'll say aggression and and just up and at them what really seemed to disrupt any sort of flow that they they had okay we still 
let them have the ball a bit type thing. But because we were aggressive in the press and everything else um, essentially going that way, we actually looked far more comfortable than sitting there and saying, well, eventually what's going to happen is they're going to have a shot, they're going to score. Eventually something that's like that inevitability of sitting there and whether that just being nerves or anything from it, that's always what Leicester felt like, uh, yeah. essentially when we were obviously playing against them. And yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know in terms of whether he would essentially, whether he's learned that lesson. The, the the I suppose the case law essentially is to go back and look at that Huddersfield uh, one where it wasn't really bothered in attacking no. it wasn't really bothered in anything we'll just see out what we can do if we can get to penalties and get through it then brilliant and uh, essentially minimal risk but yeah away from home that seems obviously to be we you know the the trend of okay we'll play it safe and we'll nick what we can and then at home obviously that's it so yeah I mean the home legs got to play surely especially with how how our form is in is in complete comparison to one another definitely well i'm going to finish by asking you for three predictions uh some easier than others first of all bristol city this weekend then whether norwich will get in the playoffs so i have a feeling i know what you'll say and third of all and probably the biggest question how will they get on if slash when they are in the playoffs Okay, so Bristol City, I had a quick look. They're actually, uh, on the last five games, they're actually the most informed team yeah. in the division, which I absolutely blew me away. Um, wasn't quite uh, wasn't quite uh, prepared to see that. Um, but hopefully by now, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll hopefully might start their um, on the beach sort of thing. Maybe yeah. want to turn around and have a summer of injuries or anything else like that. Um, but I think, I think hopefully we'll do the business against uh, Bristol City. So we'll take the, we'll take the win. Um, and, and and hopefully whether it's a tight game, whether it's a great game or whatever, I think we'll, we, we, we might just sneak that, get it over. And then Wagner's going to be keen to, to get as much done as he can. So he can, no, who wants wiggle room? Uh, yeah. you know, that'd be nice. Um, but yeah, so there's that in terms of the playoffs, I think going off last night's result and the fact that Coventry and Hull have to play each other and everything else I think if we can get those three points either this weekend or maybe at Swansea or, or, or sorry at home to Swansea um, then that would be it I wouldn't want to go anywhere near Birmingham um, needing anything especially if they're in a scrap um, and then like I say in terms of it I mean we've got to go we've got to go in positive uh, that there is the whole debate of okay, do we really want to go up because we're looking then potentially at a rebuild and all that? Yeah. Much bigger conversation. I appreciate that, but you've got to go in positive. If you're going to be in it, you might as well turn around and try and set yourself up with the best chance. And you know, for a club like Norwich who need that Premier League money to be able to turn around and, and really kick on, who knows? Maybe Mark Attenas, he really is a safety. 